I'm Rachel and welcome to my channel. I normally make a lot of houseplant videos but today I am throwing in one of my furniture DIY sorts of videos because I have this chair. It was attacked apparently at some point and now it needs some help. <laughs> so I am just going to deconstruct this and then I'm going to put some fabric on it because um, that's what you do. Um, it doesn't smell bad, uh, or like maybe it got clawed up by a cat, but it wasn't sprayed by a cat, thank goodness. And so it's really actually in good condition. It was a well upholstered chair, and so it has basically all the parts that I need to it that are still in good condition. I kind of uh, looked through it a little bit better underneath the fabric, and everything seems fine to where I won't have to go and find new batting or anything. But I don't like how poofy the back side is right here. It just sticks out a little bit more. I, I don't know. I might go ahead and leave it, but uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. And I don't have a sewing machine with a footer for, well, I don't have a sewing machine, period, but let alone a footer for cording. So I'm probably not going to do this kind of trim. What I'm going to do instead, I think, is for this part to the back. I'm just going to use one whole piece for this. I also don't have any tacks sort of a things. Normally what you would do is after you've put on the front part, then you go and put your cording or whatever your trim stuff along here. And then you put on this, these tack things. And then you put this on and you tuck it into there and you use a rubber mallet to push those down, but um, since I'm not going to do this part, then it's pointless for me to do this, and so, you know, I'm just doing this for myself, so I'm going to try it and see how it all looks, just all smooth, one whole continuous line, and if I don't like it, then I can do something else. <laughs> I like this chair quite a lot. It has nice detailing on the arms, and it's pretty comfortable. And so it's going to be a good chair for in my bedroom where I'm going to be doing something. I don't know. I want to make a sitting area sort of thing, and this is the start of it. I also have a pot for a plant in there, but I don't have the plant yet, so um, we're off to a good start. <laughs> I have quite a few fabric choices to choose from. I was initially thinking this one because I had gotten a lot of fabric to redo another chair, but I do have a bigger chair that I think I'll go ahead and re use this to redo it because I like this fabric for that. Otherwise, I might make a dress with it. I don't know. There's a lot of fabric here, <laughs> but it's beautiful. I mean, it's not gorgeous. It's just, I don't know, it's really cute and summery, and the chair that I'd be putting it on has a slip cover, so I could use this for the times of the year that I want this kind of a print. I don't know. I might have to change my curtains first though because they're red and I don't like my curtains that much anyway so anyways forget about that for now. What I was actually thinking I was going to do was use this fabric and then this as the back for the, the back part but um, this I don't have quite enough of it and um, it's I'd have to lay it to where the lines go this way, and that's okay. I just don't really like it as much as them laying more. Like, it just looks, I just like the lines going this way. And this fabric, I couldn't, it, it comes like this, to where it only is so long this ways, and so I couldn't really do that on this chair without you know, having the footer for a sewing machine and a sewing machine and using the tack strips and everything. So I thought that i just go ahead and get more fabric. <laughs> and so I got this. It's pretty big. I got a lot of it. I don't remember. Like, did I get three yards of it? Something like that. And it's a nice tea stain sort of a color. So I'm going to be using this. And where's my tacks? Ah, ha ha. I'm going to be using these. They're a nice sort of coppery color. I think that this copper would just look so lovely. But something that I was having fun with messing around with because I have these flower sack towels 
that I get at Murdoch's for like a dollar something like that. Sometimes they're on sale for less than a dollar, but I was putting them on another chair that is just the bottom piece and something that you can change out really easily. But I was looking to see if it would fit on here and it like totally does. It's, well, not this way, this way. You'd have to use a couple of them and you'd have to do the tack strips on the back and everything. But like if you have a small chair like this, you could totally just get some really cute towels that are nice and big. You know, so that way you have enough room to staple it. And if it's more of like this kind of a color, whatever, but like a thicker, this one is, this, these are pretty thin flower sack ones. If you have ones that are a little thicker for especially a chair that's going to be getting more use, you could tea stain it and then do like some, some tape along it and paint it with like some chalk paint or something to make it look like a flower sack, not flower sack green sacks that green sack material thing that everybody's obsessed with you do that that'd be really cute but anyways first I need to deconstruct this and my favorite tool to use is a box cutter and then um, you need some plier thingies to rip things out and I cannot find my flathead screwdriver but that doesn't always fit underneath all the staples um, but this one usually does pretty well so it's like a, the little tiny one. <laughs> I'm really professional at doing furniture, but whatever. Oh, also I have scissors. I might need other things. I have a hot glue gun also with Gorilla Glue. And then I'm also going to be ironing my fabric before I put it on just because it has some pretty deep creases in it. You can't tell probably, whatever. Gosh, this fabric won't even rip. What kind of fabric is this? Cat dog hair. Yeah, this is perfect for a cat. So I'm going to be saving this batting just in case I decide that I want to use it. I am going to finish taking all the backing off and then I'll show you where I am at when I do that. Okay? So that way this doesn't get boring of me just taking everything off. That wasn't it. What are you doing? What are you doing, kitty? You find a nice comfy spot? You're gonna take a nap? You are. So now I need to iron my fabric and then put back on all the cushioning and staple it in place.
Betty, are you so cute? What? <laughs> You're adorable. Yes, you are. So it's another day and I have this stool that I got for a dollar, I believe. It might have been like 50 cents, I don't know. It has these lion heads on it, like big old paw things. And it just has these really pretty details. This is what I bought initially and then my grandpa went and cut this out for me. So I am going to upholster this and have it go with my lovely stool. And I still have all my upholstery stuff out because I did this and I'm like, oh, I need to do this because they're going to go awesome together. I'm going to use the striped fabric on this and I think it's gonna look really good. I have all this extra that I took off the back of the chair because I didn't like it being so poofy. So, I am going to get there. What are you doing? Do you think everything's about you? You do. I am going to use this on the bottom and lay it flatter. Get there. If I think it needs to be fluffier though, I have more stuffing. Perfect. So I do have some hangover along here, so I'll just trim that and then stuff it underneath as well. So what I'm going to do on this end here where I have all the back stapled is I'm going to just fold this down and then fold this over. So that way it creates a nice little edge. It's like I'm folding a present, basically. Now I need to pull this side. I've already stapled right here. I need to pull this side nice and tight. And Those aren't good enough seals. Gotta. Okay, so now I gotta turn it over. And Hi. my sides are nice. Ooh. It's all nice and good. This is the round part that I haven't finished yet. This is going to be the more difficult part, but it shouldn't be too hard. If your wood piece is up higher, then you'll wanna make sure that you have some cushioning down lower so that way if somebody whacks their foot on it or something and it looks more full and plush and nice.
that's actually that's looking pretty good it's a little bit wonky but once i finish pulling the rest of it tight and stapling it it will be perfect for the edges i'm going to have to do a pleat and i'm going to do it over onto the straight side over here but first i gotta pull this So right here you can see it's a little puckery right on this edge, but it's like perfect. I'm just going to pull this tight right here and that will make that edge perfect. So I'm still holding it in place, making sure it's nice and tight. I'm going to staple that down more. And that's perfect. I wanted to have a fabric that was soft and very subtle and so this cloth worked out great and then the duck cloth for my stool is such a nice soft color as well they're both more on a flax sort of a type of look this corner is of course a little bit unfinished still I need to get a light but my light is downstairs I have a grill light that I'm planning on bringing up here but I'm waiting for my husband to put a window in my downstairs workroom, craft room thing, and then I'll have a lot more light in my craft room. So then I can bring my grow light up here and then I can bring in some plants. This little ZZ plant, you might recognize, it's, it's, I still need to cut this off. I just, I called you a ZZ, I'm so sorry, you're a Sansevieria. I just haven't cut this off yet. It's just so pretty and, but then, it, I don't know. I really need to try to cut it off and propagate it, but I've just been too lazy lately. So anyways, this actually lives in my bathroom. I just brought it in here to kind of show you what I'm thinking. My plan is to get a big peace lily in here because I love the soft kind of draping of the peace lily that it has. And then I can also bring in other lower light plants, but not like crazy low light, of course, because I'll have a grow light. So I could bring in things like pothos and be just fine with those. I'm sure that they would be great. But then other things that I could probably bring in here and try might be things like ferns or my angel wing begonias or marantas, other types of prayer plants. I could try those up here and see if they do okay. I hope you enjoyed this video and I know it's not the usual what I do, but I still thought it'd be fun and I don't know. I'm gonna see if like this lighting looks nice because then I might actually keep doing this for my videos a little bit more. Should probably put a plant up there though. That would look nice. But um, yeah, it would have to be a low light loving plant of course, which is hard to come by for this low of light. It doesn't, like, it doesn't look like that low of light, but it only gets low light like a little higher low light later in the day and it's only for like a couple hours so the rest of the day it's just not enough light i don't think for plants to survive well enough but if i find a really good healthy robust zz plant that might do well because my zz plant is not the healthiest when i got it it was already rotting and i've had to save it like a couple of times because it's just not happy it's still not that happy but it's doing better Anyways, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want more videos like this, then please let me know, because I love doing furniture makeovers and things, and I like redecorating my house, so uh, I'm always moving furniture around and plants. <laughs> I hope you have a really great day. I will talk to you later. Bye!